what I'm on about! That's what I'm on about! Hello boys and girls and welcome to the preview and predicted lineup for tomorrow's game Aston Villa against Arsenal and it's time to forget about what happened against Wolves and move on to the next one and that's the beauty of football that you've always got that next game to get over the disappointments of the one before of course it can you know have the reverse effect because you could lose it and then that disappointment continues and when you're playing the early game on a Saturday afternoon, it means that if results don't go right, you could spend all weekend absolutely fuming about it. But I tell you something, I am actually looking forward to getting back to watching Arsenal and to seeing if they can replicate those first 47 minutes without the sending off or anything else. Because um, the way we played, you know, in that first period against Wolves was absolutely superb arguably our best performance of the season to date and um, you know the only criticism that you will have looking at it is the fact that it was only 1-0 and we were going to go into half time 1-0 ahead and you're thinking yeah if I'm going to be really picky it should have been 2 or 3 at least you know hit the woodwork goal disallowed multiple you know chances and opportunities and yeah, on another day we would have got three points and that would have been absolutely massive in terms of the Premier League table. Now, Aston Villa, last time out they lost um, against West Ham uh, 3-1 and they did play 24 hours after us. And I'm just kind of hoping that the short turnaround for them may well be an advantage to us, especially in the final 20-25 minutes of the game. Um, but they're currently ahead of us in the Premier League. Um, they're one point ahead of us, um, but they have played two games less. So it's going to be very, very important to sort that out because, um, yeah, we ain't got much left of the season really, have we? 16 games for Arsenal. And because of our poor form in November, December, it means that we have no margin for errors now. We've really got to start winning games and picking up maximum you know, points as much as we can. And this is one of them. Um, in their last six games, they've lost four. So you're looking at that and you're saying they can be got at. They most definitely can be got at. Defensively, they got one of the best in the Premier League. 24 goals conceded in comparison to our 22. Of course, Emi Martinez is going to be in goal for them. Um, and there's not going to be the comparisons of Martinez versus Leno because Leno's suspended after his red card against Wolves. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a really, really tough game. And there's one player in particular that we need to keep an eye on, and that's Jack Grealish. West Ham were very, very good in nullifying him in their game you know, during midweek. And um, you stop the supply line with Aston Villa. And um, you've won half the battle. And if you can keep the likes of Jack Grealish away from, you know, orchestrating things and, you know, getting the ball to the likes of Ollie Watkins, then you've definitely got a chance. And uh, I think that even though we're playing at Villa Park, the fact there's no fans in the stadium will be an advantage to us as well. We lost there last season. Um, I think it would be a completely different game, you know, in terms of how that was last year. Um, it was disappointing we lost the game, but I think we were both at different ends of the scale in comparison to where we are right now. And of course, Aston Villa came to the Emirates earlier on in the season and they absolutely battered us. And um, that was one of the biggest humiliations of the season. And they completely dominated us from minute one to 90. And um, we're lucky we only conceded three goals, to be honest because we were absolutely dreadful. But we are a completely different team right now. And um, I expect a completely different performance. And when you're looking at our Premier League games coming up, it's going to be important to get these three points because you get those three points and it moves us up into eighth place in the Premier League. We will go above Aston Villa and we will also go above Spurs. Um, it will put us two points behind Everton 
two points behind Chelsea, uh, four points behind West Ham, and six points behind Liverpool, who occupied a final Champions League place. And the way that they're playing at the moment, who's to say they're not going to continue dropping points? West Ham are going really well. Um, so we're going to have to keep an eye out for them. And it'll be interesting when we play them, um, you know, shortly as well. And uh, Chelsea, will their resurgence continue under the new manager? Everton, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting final couple of months to the season. And like I said, I feel that the Champions League places will probably be a better battle than the title race, to be honest. I know it's close at the moment because there's only three points in it between both Manchester clubs. But with Man City a game in hand, I just feel that Man City are going to pull away eventually. And um, yeah, I feel that the Champions League and um, you know possibly the relegation is where the battle's going to be. But listen, let's focus one game at a time. Team selection is going to be interesting given the suspensions. So this is what I am going to go with. Starting off in goal, Matt Ryan. I think he's fit and I think he will be available for the game. And I'm sorry, but Runnison cannot go in goal. Even when he came on against Wolves, he still looks a bag of nerves. And it's not fair on the boy. And I don't think that he should be playing. And if Matt Ryan isn't fit, then he has to. But I think Matt Ryan's going to be fine. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, right back, Hector Bellerin. Um, and you'll see why in a moment. But yeah, I don't think there's any other option right now. So we have to go with him. Right centre back, Rob Holden. And um, again... He's been really good of late and he's going to need to be again against Aston Villa and the pace and trickery of the likes of Ollie Watkins. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. Now, left centre back, Gabriel. Of course, David Luiz is suspended. He was the player that came on um, at half time against Wolves. So he would have got 45 minutes under his belt. And um, I think that's the natural selection to go with. So that's what I will go with. Um, left back and it's going to be Cedric. Um, I don't think Kieran Tierney is going to be fit. I haven't heard whether he is or not. If he was, then he would come into the side and Cedric would go as a right back. But given the fact that I don't think Tierney is going to be available, we're going to have to make do again and Cedric on the left-hand side. Now the two in midfield, first of all, Thomas Partey. And he's getting better and better and better with more minutes that he keeps playing. And against Wolves, he was absolutely immense. His passing... Just everything about him is just world class. And do I even need to explain more why he has to play? Um, alongside him, Granite Shaka gave absolutely everything against Wolves. Felt really sorry for him because that was one player that really, really gave every ounce he could muster for trying to get something out of the game. And it wasn't to be. But him and Partey, their partnership starting to look really good of late. And... Um, I don't think that that's a debatable decision at all. Now, in the attacking three, of course, we're going to have some debates and we do have options. First of all, on the right-hand side, Bukayo Saka. Um, very, very straightforward for me. Opening 15 minutes against Wolves, he was absolutely frightening. He looked like a boy possessed. Um, and given the fact he did miss the Manchester United game, he should be absolutely raring to go. Um in the middle, number 10, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to bring in Martin Odegaard. Um, I feel that Emil Smith-Rowe has started to look a little tired um, over the last couple of games. And he has been carrying a knock. And what I will say is that it's nothing down to him, you know, individually and what he's done on the pitch performance-wise. It's just the fact that I feel he's still getting up to speeds with, you know, Premier League football. It's completely different. You know, first team football to under 23s. And we're going to have a nice week's break after this uh, because we're not in the FA Cup. Um, FA Cup games are, of course, midweek. So, you know, us going out could well be that blessing because everybody's got a good week to recover and, um, you know, get themselves ready for the game against Leeds United. And I just feel with this one, I'd like to see a slight rotation. And Odegaard has been here... Near enough a couple of weeks now, he would have really got into knowing the players and the system and what we want to do, etc. And I think that he could well be 
you know, ready to go and firing. And um, that's what I would go with. Now, on the left-hand side, I'm going to go with Nicola Pepe. And, of course, there will be debate. Pepe or Aubameyang, I don't think there's even a debate. Pepe starts three games in a row. He's been absolutely superb. He's scoring goals. He's direct. He's aggressive. Defensively, he's working. Everything about his game right now is brilliant. And he does not come out of the side. I don't care who, you know, is available. He doesn't come out of the side. He starts. Um, up front, main striker, Alexandre Lacazette. Now, I suppose this is where you will have the debate again about Lacazette, Aubameyang. Not for me again. Aubameyang has to work for his place back into the team. It's as simple as that. Um, Lacazette brings so much to the team with his link and his hold-up play. And I just don't feel that that's what Aubameyang's all about. And... Um, that's what I'm going to go with. So there we go. That is my preview and my predicted 1 to 11. As usual, let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. The formation, I think we can all agree on, will be a 4 2 3 1. And that's what we've now decided to go with. Um, and it's just the personnel. If you disagree with anything, what do you disagree with? You know, it might be Emil Smith Rowe, Odegaard, maybe a Bamiyang up front instead of Lacazette. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. And of course, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.